The Bahamas, 700 islands of sun-drenched bliss, a paradise that seems almost too good to be true, crystal clear water that could make a mermaid jealous. It's the kind of place where you can lose yourself in the beauty of nature, and an economic history more exciting than a conch salad after a night of rum punches. Who knew, right? The Bahamas isn't just about beaches and cocktails, it's a place with a rich and complex past. Before Europeans stumbled in, the native Lucayan people were living the good life. Fishing, farming, crafting, basically living every millennial's dream of being off the grid. They had a sustainable lifestyle that was in harmony with nature. They even had their own currency. Sadly, it wasn't seashells but close enough. Their economy was based on trade and barter, a system that worked perfectly for their needs. Then Columbus showed up. Like that guest who overstays their welcome, he brought big changes. Columbus's arrival marked the beginning of a new era, one that would forever alter the course of Bahamian history. And by big changes, I mean disease and forced labor, not exactly the makings of a thriving economy. The native population suffered greatly and their way of life was disrupted beyond repair. But hey, at least the weather's nice, right? The Bahamas has always been blessed with a climate that attracts visitors from around the world. It's a place where the sun shines almost every day, and the gentle breeze carries the scent of the ocean. Fast forward to today, and the Bahamian economy has evolved in fascinating ways. Tourism is the lifeblood of the islands, bringing in millions of visitors each year. But there's more to the story. The Bahamas has also become a major player in the financial services industry. With its favorable tax laws and strategic location, it's a hub for international banking and investment. And let's not forget the local artisans and craftsmen who keep traditional Bahamian culture alive. From straw weaving to Junkanoo costumes, their work is a testament to the island's rich heritage. The fishing industry, too, remains a vital part of the economy. Bahamian waters are teeming with marine life, providing both sustenance and livelihood for many islanders. Education and innovation are also on the rise. Young Bahamians are being equipped with the skills and knowledge to drive the economy forward, blending tradition with modernity. So, the next time you think of the Bahamas, remember it's not just a vacation spot. It's a place with a dynamic economy, a rich history, and a vibrant culture. Sun, sand, and so much more. Ahoy matey! Welcome to the wild and untamed world of 17th century piracy. The 17th century in the Bahamas was basically one giant Pirates of the Caribbean casting call. Pirates from all over the world converged on these islands, drawn by the promise of treasure and adventure. Except with less Johnny Depp and more scurvy. Life on the high seas was harsh, and many pirates suffered from diseases like scurvy, due to a lack of fresh fruits and vegetables. Spanish gold, bountiful shipwrecks, the Bahamas were a pirate's paradise. The waters around the islands were treacherous, leading to numerous shipwrecks that provided a steady supply of loot for the pirates. Think of it as the Las Vegas of the high seas minus the casinos and Celine Dion concerts. Instead, there were hidden coves, secret hideouts, and plenty of rum to go around. This era wasn't exactly great for economic stability. The constant threat of pirate attacks made it difficult for legitimate trade to flourish, and the local economy suffered as a result. Imagine trying to run a seaside souvenir shop while Blackbeard keeps popping in, demanding discounts and leaving rum stains everywhere. The presence of notorious pirates like Blackbeard made everyday life unpredictable and dangerous. Eventually, the British decided enough was enough. They launched a concerted effort to rid the Bahamas of its pirate problem, sending in naval forces to restore order. They brought in some order, kicked out the pirates mostly, and the Bahamas started to look less like a pirate haven and more like, well, a British colony. The transformation wasn't immediate, but over time, the islands became more stable and less chaotic, paving the way for a new chapter in their history. The British colonial era brought new challenges and opportunities. The island's strategic location made them an important naval base, and the economy began to recover as trade routes were re-established. British soldiers patrolled the islands, ensuring that the days of pirate rule were well and truly over. The once lawless waters became safer for merchants and travelers alike. The cultural landscape of the Bahamas also began to change. British customs and traditions started to blend with the local culture, creating a unique and diverse society. Markets bustled with activity as goods from around the world flowed into the islands. The Bahamas were no longer just a pirate's paradise, they were becoming a thriving hub of commerce and culture. 
Today, the legacy of those pirate days can still be felt in the Bahamas. The island's rich history continues to attract visitors from around the world, eager to explore the stories of adventure and intrigue that shaped this unique corner of the Caribbean. The 18th century saw the rise of sugar plantations in the Bahamas. These plantations were not just small family-run operations, they were massive enterprises that required a significant labor force to operate efficiently. And by rise I mean exploited the heck out of enslaved Africans to generate obscene wealth for a select few. The lives of these enslaved individuals were marked by unimaginable hardship, suffering, and a complete lack of freedom. Sugar was the oil of its day and the Bahamas were swimming in it. The demand for sugar in Europe was insatiable, and the Caribbean islands, including the Bahamas, became the epicenter of this lucrative trade. Well, not literally. That would be sticky. And attract sharks. But metaphorically, the Bahamas were awash in the wealth generated by sugar production, even as the human cost continued to mount. But this economic boom came at a terrible human cost. The enslaved Africans endured grueling labor, harsh punishments, and lived under constant threat of violence. Their contributions were the backbone of the sugar industry, yet they reaped none of the benefits. The abolition of slavery in 1834 brought moral relief but also an economic hangover. The end of slavery was a monumental step towards justice and human rights, but it also disrupted the economic structure that had been built on the backs of enslaved labor. It was like the sugar rush wore off and the Bahamas were left with a stomachache. The transition to a free labor market was challenging, and the economy had to adapt to a new reality. The legacy of the plantation era is still felt today, as the Bahamas continues to grapple with the long-term effects of this dark chapter in its history. Remember Prohibition in the US? Turns out banning alcohol is great for your neighbor's economy, if your neighbor happens to be the Bahamas. Suddenly, these islands weren't just a tropical getaway, they were the biggest open bar in the Western Hemisphere. Rum flowed like water, fortunes were made, and I'm sure there were some killer hangovers. But like all good parties, prohibition eventually ended. The US started drinking legally again, and the Bahamas realized relying on your neighbor's questionable life choices isn't a sustainable economic model. Post-prohibition, the Bahamas needed a new gig, enter tourism sun, sand, and the lingering scent of rum, what's not to love? The rise of air travel in the mid-20th century made the Bahamas accessible to a whole new audience. No more months-long voyages at sea. Now, you could be sipping a daiquiri on the beach just hours after complaining about the TSA. Tourism quickly became the bread and butter of the Bahamian economy, literally. Have you seen the price of a coconut on those islands? It's like they carved the price tag out of solid gold. Tourism was booming, but the Bahamas had another trick up their sleeve offshore banking. Low taxes and even lower scrutiny made it a haven for anyone looking to stash their cash away from the prying eyes of, well, everyone. Suddenly the Bahamas were synonymous with secretive finances and numbered accounts. It wasn't all shady dealings, but let's just say the line between savvy investor and bond villain got a little blurry. The 2008 financial crisis hit the Bahamas hard. Tourism took a nosedive as people suddenly had to choose between their 401k and a pina colada. Spoiler alert, pina coladas lose. Offshore banking, already facing pressure for its less than transparent practices, also took a hit. The global crackdown on tax evasion meant fewer people were lining up to deposit briefcases full of unmarked bills. It was a wake-up call. The Bahamas realized they couldn't just be a beach in a bank, they needed to diversify and fast. As if economic woes weren't enough, the Bahamas also have to deal with Mother Nature's occasional temper tantrums. Hurricanes are a fact of life in the Caribbean, and the Bahamas have seen their share of devastation. But here's the thing about the Bahamian people, they're resilient, they rebuild, they adapt and they come back stronger. It's like they have a whole island nation's worth of duct tape and optimism. So, how do you future-proof an economy built on sunshine and secrecy? The Bahamas are figuring it out. They're investing in renewable energy, diversifying their tourism offerings, and exploring new sectors like aquaculture and technology. It's not always easy, and progress can be slow, but the Bahamas are proving that even paradise has to adapt to the changing times. So after all that, 
Where do the Bahamas stand economically? It's complicated. They have a high GDP per capita but also significant income inequality. Tourism and financial services still dominate but new sectors are emerging. It's like that friend who always seems to have their life together on Instagram, but then you find out they're secretly drowning in credit card debt. The Bahamas have the potential to be a model of economic success, but they've got some work to do. From pirates to plantations, rum running to recessions, the Bahamas have seen it all. Through it all, they've shown an incredible ability to adapt, reinvent, and come out on top. So, the next time you're sipping a Bahama Mama on a pristine beach, take a moment to appreciate the island nation's economic journey. It's a story of resilience, resourcefulness, and a whole lot of rum. And honestly, isn't that what we all aspire to? Well, maybe except for the rum, or maybe not.